What's up, my friend? This is Keith Kelfis, Story Time with Keith. This is a very popular thing. A lot of people liked it when I would read from books. I called it Story Time with Keith. And I haven't done it in a long time. And here we are. I'm going to be reading about fear setting and escaping paralysis. So if you are paralyzed by fear and you have analysis paralysis, you might want to pay attention to the story that I'm going to read. I'm going to be reading a section in the book Tools of Titans by Tim Ferriss, about three quarters into the book called My Favorite Thought Exercise, Fear Setting. Now, if you hang out with me for a little bit here and actually listen to this chapter that I'm going to read, it's so powerful. It could actually change the trajectory of your life. I wouldn't waste your time. I wouldn't sit here and just read some, well, maybe I would read some crazy stuff, but this is so good that I specifically felt just my heart was calling to read this to you tonight. This could get you to make some decisions in your life to take the leap of faith and take the jump and do something that maybe you've been putting off and procrastinating on. So without any further ado, I was waiting for some people to join in the stream here. We're live on eight different platforms at once. So you might be on my YouTube channel at Keith Kelfis or on Facebook or Twitter. So my favorite thought exercise, fear setting. Ready? This chapter details my process of fear setting, which I use constantly and schedule at least once per quarter. This is adapted from a chapter in the four hour work week. Okay. Now, fear setting and escaping paralysis. Many a false step was made by standing still. Fortune cookie. Named must be your fear before you can banish it. Yoda from Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back. Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, 20 feet and closing. Run! Run! Hans didn't speak Portuguese, but the meaning was clear enough. Haul ass. His sneakers gripped firmly on the jagged rock, and he drove his chest forward toward 3,000 feet of nothing. He held his breath in on the final step, and the panic drove him to near unconsciousness. His vision blurred at the edges closing to a single pinpoint of light, and then he floated. The all-consuming celestial blue of the horizon hit his visual field in an instant after he had realized that the thermal updraft had caught him in the wings of the paraglider. Fear was behind him on the mountaintop, and thousands of feet above the replendent, resplendent green rainforest and pristine white beaches of Copacabana. Hans Keeling had seen the light. That was Sunday. On Monday, Hans returned to his law office in Century City, Los Angeles, posh corporate haven, and promptly handed in his three-week notice. For nearly five years, he had faced his alarm clock with the same dread. I have to do this for another 40 to 45 years? He had once slept under his desk at the office after a punishing, half-done project only to wake up and continue on it the next morning. That same morning, he had made himself a promise. Two more times of this, and I'm out of here. Strike number three came the day before he left for his Brazilian vacation. This is like the fourth or fifth time of me reading this. This is how powerful this is going to get. If you're here right now, let me know in the comments. Say, I'm here, because this is going to get good. You ready? Everybody here, say, I'm here, because this is going to get really good. All right, I see you in the comments. I see you. Story time with Keith (laughs) Dowd. All right, ready? We all make promises to ourselves, and Hans had done it before as well. But things were now somehow different. He was different. He had realized something while arcing in slow circles toward the earth. Risks weren't that scary. Once you took them, his colleagues told him what he'd expected to hear. He was throwing it all away. He was an attorney on his way to the top. What the hell did he want? Hans didn't know exactly what he wanted, but he had tasted it. On the other hand, he did know what bored him to tears, and he was done with it. No more passing days as the living dead. No more dinners where his colleagues compared cars, riding on the sugar high of a new BMW purchase until someone bought a more expensive Mercedes. It was over. Immediately. A strange shift began, Hans felt, for the first time in a long time, at peace with himself and what he was doing. He had always been terrified of plane turbulence, as if he might die with the best inside of him. 
but now he could fly through a violent storm, sleeping like a baby. Strange indeed. More than a year later, he was still getting unsolicited job offers from law firms, but by then, he had started Nexus Surf, a premier surf adventure company based in the tropical paradise of Florinopolis, Brazil. He had met his dream girl, a carioca with caramel-colored skin named Tatiana, and spent most of his time relaxing under palm trees or treating clients to the best times of their lives. Is this what he had been so afraid of? These days, he often sees his former self in the underjoyed and overworked professionals he takes out on the waves. Waiting for the swell, the true emotions come out. God, I wish I could do what you do. His reply is always the same. You can. This is going to get good. If you're here with me right now on Storytime with Keith, stick around. I know you want to be scrolling through Facebook and Instagram and TikTok. Oh, my God. You want to scroll. But if you spend just 10 minutes with me on this video, I don't care about views. I don't care about nothing. I care about you. And you just listen to what this is about to get into. I promise you it'll be good. It's really, really good. Okay? And I see you in the comments. Now, so basically this guy chased his dreams and opened up a surf paradise and moved to the tropicals. He quit being an attorney to chase his dreams. And now he takes other people out and he takes them on surf and paragliding or whatever. And when they say, God, I wish I could do this every day, he goes, you can, right? Talking about facing fears. The setting sun reflects off the surface of the water, providing a zen-like setting for a message he knows is true. It's not giving up to put your current path on a definite pause. He could pick up his law career exactly where he left off if he wanted to, but that is the furthest thing from his mind. As they paddle back to the shore, after an awesome session, his clients get a hold of themselves and regain their composure. They set foot on the shore and reality sinks its fangs in. I would, but I, I can't really throw it all away. He has to laugh. The power of pessimism, defining the nightmare. Action may not always bring happiness, but there is no happiness without action. Benjamin Disraeli, former British Prime Minister. To do or not to do. To try or not to try. Most people will vote no, whether they consider themselves brave or not. Uncertainty and the prospect of failure can be very scary noises in the shadows. Many people will choose unhappiness over uncertainty. For years, I set goals, made resolutions to change direction, and nothing came of either. I was just as insecure and scared as the rest of the world. The simple solution came to me accidentally in 2004. At that time, I had more money than I knew what to do with. I was completely miserable. Worse than ever, I had no time and I was working myself to death. I had started my own company, only to realize it would be nearly impossible to sell. Oops. I felt trapped and stupid at the same time. I should be able to figure this out. I thought, why am I such an idiot? You ever ask yourself that? Why can't I make this work? Buckle up and stop being such a... Insert your expletive. What's wrong with me? The truth was, nothing was wrong with me. Critical mistakes and made in the company's infancy would never let me sell it. I could hire magic elves and connect my brain to a supercomputer. It didn't matter. My little baby had some serious birth defects. This turned out to be yet another self-imposed limitation and false construct. Brain Quicken was acquired by a private equity firm in 2009, which I discuss and more in Real World NBA on page 250. Tools of Titans, if you're interested. This is about to get real good. The question then became, how do I free myself from this Frankenstein while making it self-sustaining? How do I pry myself from the tentacles of workaholism and the fear that it would fall to pieces without my 15-hour days? How do I escape this self-made prison? A trip, I decided. A sabbatical year around the world. So I took the trip, right? Well, I'll get to that. First, I felt it prudent to dance around with my shame, embarrassment, and anger for six months, all while playing an endless loop of reasons why my cop-out fantasy trip would never work. One of my more productive periods, for sure. Then one day in my bliss of envisioning how bad my future suffering would be, I hit upon a gem of an idea. It was surely a highlight of my don't-happy-be-worry phase. Why don't I decide exactly what my nightmare would be? The first thing that could possibly happen as a result of my trip. 
Well, my business could fail while I'm overseas, obviously, probably would. A legal warning letter would accidentally not get forwarded, and I would get sued. My business would get shut down and inventory would spoil on the shelves while I'm picking my toes in solitary misery on some cold shore in Ireland, crying in the rain. I imagine my bank account would crater by 80%, and certainly my car and motorcycle and storage would be stolen. I suppose someone would probably spit on my head from a high-rise balcony while I'm feeding food scraps to a stray dog, which would then spook and bite me squarely on the face. God, life is a cruel, hard... Conquering fear equals defining fear. Set aside a certain number of days during which you shall be content with the scantiest and cheapest fare, with coarse and rough dress, saying to yourself the while, is this the condition that I feared? Seneca. So you see where he's going. He's defining his fear right now. I remember there was a time I had lost my driver's license a couple times when I was younger for driving like an idiot. I didn't pay my tickets because I was broke. (laughs) And I remember I lost my driver's license for two and a half years and I was riding a bike 10 miles, taking buses all over the place. I was like 23 years old riding a bike and taking buses. And today, when I see today, today, present day, when I see a city bus, part of me wants to stop and just spend a day riding around on the city bus so I can feel and go back to that place and just remember that I used to actually ride the bus around and just think about that. Do you ever reminisce and think about your life and how you barely made it and you slip through the cracks and you like by the grace of God and things like that. You think about your fears and all these different things. And so anyways, then a funny thing happened. I see you all in the comments. What up, though? <laughs> there's a huge spider behind me. Somebody in the comments just said there's a spider behind me. Don't do that to me. I, spiders are good luck. More of the Untrapped podcast right after this. Jill's office provides friendly, professional receptionists for small business owners just like you. We can help answer your calls, and we can even schedule estimates and jobs for you. Try Jill's office today and get a $25 discount when you say Untrapped. Just go to jillsoffice.com. This is Untrapped with Keith Kalfas. Then a funny thing happened in my undying quest to make myself miserable. I accidentally began to backpedal. As soon as I cut through the vague unease and ambiguous anxiety, by defining my nightmare, the worst case scenario, I wasn't as worried about taking a trip. Suddenly, I started thinking of simple steps I could do to salvage my remaining resources and get back on track if all hell struck at once. I could always take a temporary bartending job to pay the rent if I had to. I could sell some furniture and cut back on eating out. Stay with me. Just listen to where this goes because he's going to give you a structure, an actual framework. It's going to make your mind jump over the hurdle to actually do things that you're afraid of because it's going to show you why. It's going to get leverage on your unconscious mind. I realized that it wouldn't be that hard to get back to where I was, let alone survive. None of these things would be fatal, not even close, mere panty pinches on the journey of life. So if he totally failed miserably, it wouldn't be that hard to get back to right where he was, right? I realized that on a scale of one to 10, one being nothing and 10 being permanently life changing, my so-called worst case scenario might have a temporary impact of a three or four. I believe this is true of most people and most would be holy. My life is over disasters. Keep in mind that this is a one in a million disaster nightmare. On the other hand, if I realize my best case scenario or even a probable case scenario, it would easily have a permanent nine or 10 positive life changing effect. In other words, I was risking an unlikely or temporary three or four for a probable and permanent nine or ten. And I could easily recover my baseline workaholic prison with a bit of extra work if I wanted to. This is all equated to a significant realization. There was practically no risk. Only huge, life-changing upside potential. And I could resume my previous course without any more effort than I was already putting forth. That is when I made the decision to take the trip and bought a one-way ticket to Europe. I started planning my adventures and eliminating my physical and psychological baggage. None of my disasters came to pass, and my life has been a near fairy tale since. The business did better than ever, and I practically forgot about it as it financed my travels around the world in style for 15 months. Q&A, questions and actions. Pay attention. I'm an old man and have known a great many troubles. 
but most of them never happened. Mark Twain. If you are nervous about making the jump or simply putting it off out of fear of the unknown, here is your antidote. Write down your answers and keep in your mind that thinking a lot will not prove as fruitful or as prolific as simply brain vomiting it on the page. Write and do not edit. Aim for volume. Spend a few minutes on each answer. One, define your nightmare. What's the absolute worst that could happen if you did what you were considering? What doubts, fears, and what ifs would pop up as you consider the big changes you can or need to make? Envision them in painstaking detail. Would it be the end of your life? What would be the permanent impact, if any, on a scale of 1 to 10? Are these things really permanent? How likely do you think it is that they would actually happen? Right. Number two, what steps could you take to repair the damage or get the things back on the upswing, even if temporarily? Chances are it's easier than you imagine. How could you get things back under control? If you took the leap that you wanted to take, what is it for you right now? You don't have to let me know in the comments. You can if you want, right? Number three, what are the outcomes or benefits, both temporary and permanent, of more probable scenarios? Now that you've defined the nightmare, what are the more probable or definite positive outcomes, whether internal, confidence, self-esteem, etc., or external? What would be the impact of these more likely outcomes? What would they be on a scale of one to ten? How likely is it that you could produce at least a moderately good outcome? Have less intelligent people done this before and pulled it off? Number four, if you were fired from your job today, what would you do to get things under financial control? Imagine the scenario and run the questions one through three above. If you quit your job to test other options, how could you get back on the same career track if you absolutely had to, right? Five, if you were putting it off out of fear, what are you putting off out of fear? Usually what we fear most doing is what we most need to do. Define the worst case, accept it, and do it. I'll repeat something you might consider tattooing on your forehead. What we fear doing most is actually what we most need to do. As I have heard said, a person's success in life can usually be measured by the number of uncomfortable conversations he or she is willing to have. And there's a saying that I love, where you'll be in five years is directly proportional to the people you associate with, the books that you read, and the uncomfortable conversations that you're willing to have. Sometimes the next step is just a series of uncomfortable conversations with employees, with clients, with spouse, with yourself. Okay. And as I've heard it said, a person's success in life, and I'm going to recircle on this, can usually be measured by the number of uncomfortable conversations he or she is willing to have. Resolve to do one thing every day that you fear. And I got into this habit by attempting to contact celebrities and famous business people for advice. What is it costing you? financially, emotionally, and physically to postpone action. What is the cost of inaction? If you think about that, right? If your life is flatlining, because the late Brian Tracy said there's a line between earning and learning. If you're not constantly earning more, then you better be learning more. And if you're learning more, you better be earning more. And if there's ever a period, I think he said like a three-month period, 90 days where you notice you haven't learned or earned more and you flatlined, then you got to make some changes or get the hell out of there, right? Which is easier said than done, but it's true. So what is it costing you? Don't only evaluate the potential downside of action. It is equally important to measure the atrocious cost of inaction. If you don't pursue those things that excite you, where will you be in one year, five years, and 10 years? How will you feel having allowed circumstance to impose itself upon you and having allowed 10 more years of your finite life to pass doing what you know will not fulfill you? If you telescope out 10 years and know with 100% certainty that it is the path of disappointment and regret, and if we define risk as the likelihood of an irreversible negative outcome, inaction is the greatest risk of all. Number seven, what are you waiting for? If you cannot answer this without resorting to the BS concept of good timing, the answer is simple. You're afraid. Just like the rest of the world, measure the cost of inaction Realize the unlikelihood and repairability of most missteps and develop the most important habit of those who excel and enjoy doing so, action. So I want to circle back one important thing. So he said that the most powerful takeaway of this fear setting story in Tools of Titans by Tim Ferriss, a very thick book here. He said that the potential downside of you taking the action and taking the leap and chasing your dream and doing what you want to do so badly or that you say you want to do, the thing you lay in bed and dream about leaning in that direction, taking those steps. The potential downside is like a one or two or three if that horrible things will happen. But the potential upside, if it did work out, is like a seven, nine, or 10 of your life becoming so much better. 
So us letting fear get in the way of doing things that we really want to do doesn't make any sense because we're afraid like little tiny things, but the upside, we're not looking at what if it does work out that all of these great things in my life will happen. And oh my God, I'll be living my dreams or doing X, Y, and Z, or it'll cause these expansions. So for some reason, we've been brainwashed to not think about that. James Clear in his book, Atomic Habits, and I follow him on Twitter and on Instagram. He posted something and I want to share with you a very powerful, sometimes I share his stuff to my Instagram get the book Atomic Habits on audible.com and also the book by Greg McEwen called Essentialism, Life-Changing Books, James Clear. Listen to this. This goes exactly with what we just read. Oh, here it is. If you keep doing what you are about to do today for the next five years, will you end up with more of what you want or less of what you want? Another question to ask yourself, is this who I'm becoming? So next time you cower in fear and you're terrified to do something that you know you want to do, is this who I'm becoming? Because you're becoming that person right now, right? You're rehearsing that in your behavior. So this has been Keith Kelfus with Storytime with Keith. I just want to get to see your comments real quick so I can respond to them. Hi, Keith. What's up? Hi. What's up, Adam Rodriguez? Hi, Ridge Handyman. What up, Doe? Let's get to some actual longer comments. We got Green Up Lawn Care, Austin Douglas, my dog. What up, bro? Ditch the itch. Congratulations on getting your, am I allowed to say anything? He's now a certified arborist. Good for you, bro. That's powerful. What's up, Ryan Fuster? I hope I said your last name right. I see you all the time, bro. Hope you're doing very well. Christopher Robert Schmidt, all landscapers here. What's up, Herman Albert? Hope you're doing very well. Your profile pic is very scary. Mr. is lawn care. So I'll be doing story time with Keith a bit more now that it's fall. What's up, Charles Double? Hope you're doing very well. Oh, wow. Tim Johnson sent me a $2 Super Chat sticker. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'll pull up a couple more comments. Whose comment is next? Can you guess? Uh, what's up, Alvin? Chica Lawn Care. Hope you're doing well. So the books again, Brian Wise, Make Money Landscaping. We got Wiz. Was. Tools of Titans by Tim Ferriss. And then on audible.com, the two books you should get are Atomic Habits by James Clear and Essentialism by Greg McEwen. And also, if you missed this, I might put this episode on the Untrapped podcast with Keith Kelfus. My podcast just hit a half a million downloads on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Check out the Untrapped podcast. Thanks for spending this time with me and enjoy your evening. And I'll see you again soon, my friend. (laughs) Later. Remember, Take action. Don't let fear get in the way. Hey, I hope you liked the show. And if you like the Untrapped podcast and you get value from it, can you please take a minute and go over to Spotify and leave it a well-worded positive five-star review that helps boost the rankings on Spotify so the show can get to more people. Therefore, these messages can get out to more people and inspire more people so then they can go out and start their small businesses and crush it and get to the next level. It's a huge deal. All right, I'll see you in the next show.